Later this month, the Society of Exploration Geophysicists and the American Association of Petroleum Geologists will come together for their first combined annual meeting since 1955. The International Meeting for Applied Geoscience and Energy, or IMAGE, will take place from September 26th to October 1st. Current plans are for an in-person meeting at the Colorado Convention Center in Denver, but there will also be an online component for those unable to travel. With more than a thousand presentations, plus an exhibition, workshops, short courses, and a host of networking opportunities, IMAGE is being billed as the ultimate geoscience experience, and it's now just weeks away. Hi, I'm Steve Brown, Managing Editor of The Leading Edge, and I'll be your host for today's SEG Facing the Future presentation. To help us learn more about IMAGE 21, I'm joined by a distinguished panel of leaders from both AAPG and SEG. Joining us today from Houston are SEG President Maurice Nassim, AAPG President Gretchen Gillis, SEG Executive Director Jim White, and here in Tulsa, AAPG Executive Director David Curtis. Thank you all for being here. This will be the first time in 66 years that these two organizations have combined their annual meetings, a historic and I would think a fairly massive undertaking. Maurice, I wonder if you could tell us how this all came about. Thank you, Steve. I would like first to, uh, to thank all our uh, stakeholders, our members, uh, our sponsors, partners, uh, our clients, all our leadership, and also our staff members. Uh, this has been very difficult a couple of years, as we all know, and uh, that was something that uh, came up when we discussed what is needed. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, we all know how difficult it is to get uh, sponsors and to get companies to attend annual meetings. And I think both organizations have risen to, the, to, the, to a level where they felt we need to do something together. So the leadership of APG and the leadership of SEG uh, listened to the stakeholders that were asking for having joint forces in the annual meeting between AAPG and SEG. They told us that they cannot afford in this current uh, commercial and uh, challenging times, either because of the pandemic or because of the financial situation, that, that they can have, they can attend the two conferences, two meetings and send people to them and so on. So I think that was one. The other also from the members was very clear that they wanted to learn more about geology. They wanted to learn more about geophysics. It's an opportunity for a scientific interchange and exchange of ideas. And also uh, added to that, you know, the, there was a, a desire from the staff in order to be able to, able to reduce the costs and in the same time, get a much stronger and integrated annual meeting. So in SEG, you know, uh, our new executive director, Jim White, have put quite an effort in order to work with uh, his counterpart in APG, David Curtis, in order to look at all the logistics in there. Usually, you know, after the leadership decide, it is up to the staff to make it happen. And I think they did step up and really work on making this making this work, and I, I give them the credit for that. Now, on my personal on the personal side, I would like to say that you know I always felt that in geophysics, it's you know we have to have two strong hands. One is geology, and one is physics. And I think as SEG, we were leaning a little bit more into the physics side, and we needed a strong arm in in geology side, and that's where the AEPG would would come in and people would learn more and strengthen their, uh, their presence. So I think all those factors were all in one direction is to have a joint annual meeting between APG and, and SEG. Thank you. Gretchen, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the integrated nature of this event. This is really more than just two organizations having separate co-located meetings in the same building, isn't it? 
Absolutely. So um, I'd like to, to thank Maurice uh, for the invitation to join today. We, we really, I think, uh, enjoy being together. Many of us are members of both associations and we have colleagues and friends in both. And, um, and so I think rather than dwelling on the sort of the negativity of the last couple of years, it, to me, it feels like the stars are aligning. And I know it's been challenging for our volunteers to, uh, to sort of redirect midstream and figure out how to make this work. Um, but to me, it definitely feels like going to one meeting uh, that is, is richer with more opportunities. And um, I've been spared some of the behind the scenes work of the committee because um, and I've been on committees in the past and I know that those uh, teams work incredibly hard to deliver a technical program, to deliver the, the auxiliary events, the short courses and so on. Um, I, I think for me, the fact that I've only heard of progress is a, a really good sign. And, um, and so I'm looking forward to seeing so many of my favorite people together under one roof. Uh, I also think in, in a time where we're struggling with business pressures and, and pressure on our industry, uh, making things simpler and easier by joining together is a really terrific thing for us to do. Um, and, and when I joined SEG years ago, um, I, I met a few people who I didn't know were members of both organizations and, and they were so enthusiastic about cooperation and that has stuck with me for, for many years. So I'm looking forward to being with everybody in Denver. And, um, and I think really we're gonna build from there because each organization brings certain traditions. And I think, um, I think I will enjoy seeing more of how our traditions fit together and really complement each other. It will be great to get together in Denver. Uh, there is though uh, an online component to image as well as the in-person component. And uh, David, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about the advantages to both of those different meeting formats for an attendee. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, you know, we're excited about Image 21, and, uh, and if you're able to join us in person in Denver, I would strongly encourage you to do that. Um, there's nothing, uh, nothing better than actually having the chance to get together uh, and, uh, and look, at, uh, look, look at someone in the face uh, uh, fully masked uh, and, uh, and being safe but actually getting together in person. But you know, these are, these are uh, interesting times as, uh, as has been previously mentioned. And so we are offering an online option uh, for Image. And if you're unable to join us in Denver, I'd encourage you to join us online. Um, the one great thing about the online option is that you're going to be able to see these technical talks on demand. And so if there's a talk that uh, you're, you're uh, uh, if you, even if you are in person, uh, if you're able to, uh, 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 you know, be in one, in one session and then want to see a talk that's happening at the same time, uh, in the old days you had to make a choice. And these days with the hybrid option, you're going to be able to watch one, uh, one in person and the second uh, then on demand on your own schedule on a device of your choosing. So we're, we're excited about these opportunities. We think it actually empowers our, uh, our attendees. Uh, to, uh, to find and utilize all of the content, uh, all of the scientific and technical information that's going to be shared in the more than 1,000 uh, talks that you referenced, Steve. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited about that and the opportunity that technology affords us to make sure that whether you're able to attend in person or not, uh, our AAPG, SEG members, and many other stakeholders around the globe will have access to this great technical information. Excellent to have those options, uh, certainly for the, uh, uh, those who are, are unable to attend uh, to have the uh, online option as well. I'm going to assume that there are SEG members at this event who have never been to an AAPG annual convention. And vice versa, there are probably AAPG members who have not been to an SEG annual meeting. Gretchen and Maurice, and, and we'll start with you, Gretchen, I wonder what your thoughts are on how those types of individuals will benefit from this combined meeting. 
I think my first reaction to your question is that uh, it'll be a very rich experience because even attending just one annual meeting is is so rewarding in terms of the, the technical content, the networking, and, and other opportunities. And so then when you combine, I think we will see that um, there's a really wonderful array of opportunities. I think for me, um, what, um, what I'm hoping is, um, is to see so many of my colleagues. And, and I, think, I think for me, a measure of success will be seeing geologists in the geophysics sessions and seeing geophysicists in the geology sessions and seeing everybody together at the end of the day for a refreshment break and some of the special events at night. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, um, uh, recognizing the award recipients. Uh, I'm looking forward to a reception with Maurice. And um, uh, I think one of the other things is um, it, certainly in AAPG, we have a wonderful tradition of lunch lunchtime events. And I'm still trying to figure out how do I attend um, two luncheons at the same time because uh, there's so many excellent topics that are planned for this year. So, so to me, it's it's just more of a great thing, and uh, I'm I'm so looking forward to it. There is a lot to look forward to, Maurice. I, I wonder what do you think uh, uh, from the geophysicists side of the house? What will those folks gain from from uh, uh, some of the a APG content that they may not have in the past? You know, I think I think this uh, meeting is going to be uh, a dream come true to the membership. You know, like. I think everyone, every uh, geophysicist would love to attend the APG conference in addition to the SEG conference. And that was not possible in the past, you know, to go to do two conferences, it's not practical and, you know, it's difficult to have the funding for it, especially that they were most of the time in different, in different cities and they were not at the same time. So I think this is amazing, you know, like this is like for any geophysicist, when you say, as I said in, before, geophysics, it is geology and physics. So if you don't understand geology very, very well, then you will never be a good geophysicist. And because you know, we were there in the SEG conferences, it was, it was only without the APG. I mean, there are still lots of ge geology in it, but it is you know, more on the physics applications of the geophysics part of the geology. I think now this is going to give the opportunity to the geophysicists to come back home into, okay, it's not only the physics, it's applied geophysics for the earth. This is where it is the most important, the geology is the, the, the key part. So I think that's going to be, a, as, as Gretchen has said, very rich experience for everyone. I don't think, I think this is an ultimate, uh, opportunity for, for geophysicists and for geologists to learn from each other and attend one, one in one time they attend two conferences. I'd like to add one more thing and that is that um, I also find that I have colleagues working in fields like petrophysics where sometimes because of the limitations that Maurice described they have to make a choice between attending one conference or the other when really for their career and their professional development, they need to attend both. And so I hope that we capture some of the people that we might have missed at one meeting or the other by combining together. Well, there's definitely a, a lot of benefit to what amounts to two meetings in one. Um, I think that people who have been coming to one meeting or the other for many years probably have their familiar components that they look forward to uh, every year. And I'm sure that Image will, will have uh, a lot of those familiar components. Uh, but uh, David, I wonder if you might talk a little bit about some of the new and exciting parts of the program this year. Well, Steve, I, I appreciate that question because I can tell you one of the things, and Gretchen and Maurice really talked about it, uh, one of the things that I think is going to blow away the attendees at Image is just how much is available to them. Uh, and no matter what your interest, uh, there's going to be something for you. 
Um, and when you actually combine two organizations, what you come up with is a real powerhouse program. So we're going to be kicking off with uh, Rice University professor Kirsten Seabach talking about exploring Mars with curiosity and perseverance. Uh, if you've heard Dr. Seabach speak before, uh, she does a fantastic job of, uh, of looking at the Mars rover missions and, uh, and, and taking the principles of learning what we're learning about Mars and bringing them back to Earth. So that's how we're going to start this program. I think that's ex really exciting. Uh, then on Monday morning, we've got a keynote address by Pulitzer Prize winning author Dan Jurgen. He'll be talking about energy independence and his new book, The New Map. Uh, that's going to be followed by a panel uh, focused on the future of oil and natural gas. Um, that has senior oil executives from around the globe talking about where our industry is headed uh, and, what, uh, and what we can expect and, and how our members that are practicing in these fields should, uh, should position themselves for the future. So I think that's exciting. Now, as you said, Steve, you know, there's the traditional AAPG things, uh, things like the uh, AAPG Foundation's How Booty Lecture, and this year that's going to be focused on super basin thinking, how methods to explore and revitalize the world's greatest petroleum basins. Uh, we also have the Discovery Thinking Forum series talking about global uh, discoveries between 2010 and 2020. Uh, the SEG Centennial Session is going to be talking about uh, passing the wisdom of the past to the young minds of the future. Again, future focused, looking at our younger members uh, and saying, how do we equip you? How do we help you uh, uh, actually create your career uh, in this evolving landscape? So, uh, and then I, I, I have to mention the SEG Foundation supported Geoscientists Without Borders, which is a fantastic program, also supported by the AAPG Foundation, will be recognized those programs. So whether you're in, interested in uh, extraterrestrial exploration, oil and gas exploration, or near-surface exploration, there's something for you at Image 21. It is a stacked program right off the bat this year. I know I've seen Dr. Seabach uh, give her presentation on Mars before, and it was uh, uh, incredibly interesting. Uh, but there is a, a, an exhibit component to this meeting as well. And as I understand it, we will have both on-site exhibitors in Denver, as well as uh, an online presence for the exhibitors. And I'm, I'm curious how that will work. And Jim, maybe you could tell us just how the response has been from the sure. exhibitor community. Absolutely, uh, Steve. So the exhibitors are such a big part of a successful venue and a successful uh, annual meeting. Um, our key stakeholders, that's where they have the chance to either show their wares or interact and, and uh, collaborate with their potential clients. And so we, we've got a, a very uh, robust uh, commitment of companies and stakeholders that are going to exhibit at Image 21 this year. Um, there will be some that will be doing it virtually. Obviously, the COVID implications have, uh, as such that it, it, it's created some challenges. Uh, that said, we've, we've done this in the past. Uh, as you know, 2020 was an entirely virtual event. And so we've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work for exhibitors in a, in a virtual environment. And so we're, 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 trying, to, we're trying to enhance the, the product, if you will, of, of what that, that uh, virtual experience would be for exhibitors. But that said, we're, we're really excited about this year's uh, Image 21 and, and the, the contributions of the, of the current exhibitors that are going forward. And, and we know that the, the, the chance to continue to do business uh, is a big part of the annual meeting as well. And, and by having an in-presence at, uh, uh, at, the, at the venue, it provides a, 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 a better level of, of opportunity and certainly a better level of success for them to continue to do business uh, with, their, with their clients and their stakeholders as well. Yeah. You know, it occurs to me that this uh, idea of a combined meeting was sort of born out of necessity. Uh, we've talked about uh, the COVID um, sort of making this uh, a reality maybe, but I'm wondering if we, do you, do you see this model of organizations partnering for annual meetings continuing in a post-COVID world? And at this annual meeting, we've been talking about SEG and AAPG, but we also have another organization, SEPM, that's also joining in on the fund. And I just wonder if you think that uh, uh, we'll continue to see this sort of meeting. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this was not supposed to be a one and done. Uh, and when, when David and I first started talking, uh, when we were trying to collaborate on 
how we would uh, how we would make this a, a success and, and how we would get this uh, you know all the kinks ironed out to make this a successful venue. Uh, we build a level of trust amongst each other very very quickly, I might add, and and that level of trust is, has kind of uh, been pushed down into the lower um, uh, rungs of, of each organization. And and I guess as leaders, we've we've taken the the baton and made sure that we're we're moving forward in the in, in the right direction. And I'm, I'm excited that we've been able to accomplish this. As a former uh, stakeholder from the other side of the fence, you know this is something that I've been encouraging for many many years. And so there was a personal stake in it for me to ensure that we did what we could to make this happen. And yes, COVID had a lot to do with the with the uh, the cat being the catalyst, if you will. But I'll tell you what, this is a great business opportunity. It's a great technical opportunity. And uh, as Maurice and, and Gretchen have pointed out, it, it, it's going to give us a, a, a platform that we can really shine for the opportunities for our stakeholders, our members, and, and certainly our, our clientele as well. David, I wonder if you might have anything to add about that. Yeah, I just I want to echo Jim's comments about uh, the, the working relationship that we've uh, developed between AAPG and, and SEG. Uh, and, and again, this, this notion of partnership events is not necessarily a new one, but uh, with SEG, AAPG, together with SEPM, uh, creating image, bringing image to our members and our stakeholders, I think what we're really doing is saying we're, we're here to talk about applied geoscience and how the applied geosciences, whether it's geology, geophysics, sedimentology, stratigraphy, how we can use those tools, use those, uh, those, um, that, that scientific knowledge and the technologies that we use to actually solve problems. And I think that's one of the distinguishing characteristics about IMAGE. It's about using geoscience to actually solve the world's problems. You know, I think this leads kind of logically into a question that may be a little tricky, but I'm gonna ask it. Uh, back in May, AAPG and the Society of Petroleum Engineers announced that they would explore the possibility of a merger between the two organizations. Uh, for the two executive directors, I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Will the SEG AAPG partnership on image continue if AAPG and SPE do in fact merge? Well, Steve, that's a great question. And I think it's important for everybody to recognize that we have agreed that we're going to have a joint annual meeting between AAPG and SEG uh, uh, for the next five years. Uh, and, uh, and our expectation is, Jim and Mai's expectation is that this will be a, not just a, um, a, a technical success, but a commercial success for the organizations going forward and that we'll continue pursuing these opportunities for, uh, for partnership. Um, and I think one of the important things for people to recognize, uh, Steve, is, is that the lines of communication have been open since the beginning. Um, in terms of the lines of communication between the SEG leadership and the AAPG leadership, uh, as well as the SPE leadership. Uh, and so uh, everyone, everyone is going into this with, uh, with open eyes. And, and I think, as Jim said, this, uh, the, the pandemic has given us a catalyst to look at new ways of actually uh, delivering value to our members and our stakeholders through these types of events. Well said, David. And, and, and you know, the, the, the communication between all the organizations, not just SPE, APG, and SEG, but others, uh, SEPM as well. I've, I've, I've known that I've, I've and learned to uh, uh, understand that there's a uh, there's an open door with a lot of these organizations, especially at the at the top with the leaders. Um, that said, as, as as David mentioned earlier, there's already been a lot of collaboration between these organizations where we've we've done we've done venues together. So this is not really new per se, but it is new from an annual meeting perspective. And uh, we've just kind of taken it up a notch, if you will. But we're excited about the, uh, the prospects going forward. We see no reason why this can't continue. Um, you know, we don't have a crystal ball to understand what's going to happen. Uh, but what we do know is that there's going to be a, a receptive audience that says, hey, okay, now that we've done this, we're ready to move forward and, and keep this going. And, and that's what I expect to be happening as we go forward in the future. I'd like to go around the horn here with one final question. As we are less than a month out, just, just weeks out from Image 21, 
Uh, I want to ask each of you, what is the one thing that has you most excited about Image 21? And let's start with you, David. Well, we've we've talked about a lot of the features of Image 21, so I'm gonna I'm gonna reflect on something that's a little bit different, and that is. Uh, when, when Jim and I first started talking about, okay, how are we going to do this, uh, Jim made the comment that he didn't want to have this be one and done. Uh, and what he meant by that was this shouldn't be just a one-off affair, which is how we ended up with a five-year agreement. And I think that's what I'm getting excited about, is Image 21 is going to be a great event, and you don't want to miss it. You want to be with us in Denver or online if you're not able to be with us in Denver. But as Gretchen said, we're looking for feedback. And this is really the foundation that we're building for what is going to be a series of conferences long into the future that are focused on the applied geosciences and how we bring our science to bear. And so I think it's that planning for the future. It's saying that this is going to be great and next year is going to be even better. And, uh, and, and really, really pursuing that virtuous spiral of improvement uh, that makes me excited about where we're going. Jim, I know I've heard you say some very similar things. Let's uh, hear what you have to say about Image 21. Well, it, 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 well said, David. Uh, and Steve, thanks for the question. I, 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 I want to, you know, I guess in closing, want to point out the fact that we are uh, extremely excited about what we can offer within this, within this venue, as we've discussed. But there are certain things that we've done in the past that 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 are at the heart of what we've been doing all along, and that is, you know, uh, mostly to the oil and gas perspective for the applied geosciences. And one of the things that it's been a personal challenge of mine is to open up that that level of of attention to some of the other areas within the applied geosciences, specifically, you know, near surface uh, imaging, uh, groundwater. Uh, carbon solutions, um, you know, geothermal, those are all a part of where applied geoscience comes into play when we, when we look at uh, uh, how we're going to solve a lot of those challenges and problems and uh, take it one step further. You know, it's not just a geological problem. It's not just a, a geophysical problem. It could be an engineering problem as well. And this is where collaborating with all these different societies really helps us uh, attack these challenges and actually set ourselves up for success, certainly with our members and our stakeholders as well. So I'm really excited about that. I've, I've, again, I've taken it as a personal challenge to, to really open up the, the level of attention to these other areas of focus within the, uh, the energy sector and uh, the non-core areas of, 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 uh, uh, of, of focus that we normally are, are uh, uh, experiencing within this type of venue, so. Gretchen, what has you most amped I have to say it goes back to the people and the community. I have plans to see many, many, many people while I'm in Denver. Um, a particular highlight I think will be the awards ceremonies where we will recognize the people who have achieved and accomplished and contributed so much to our science. And I think um, at the end of the, these conferences, it's always sort of bittersweet, the exhaustion and the leaving and the saying goodbye and, and following on what Jim was saying about applied science and, and solving problems, um, something that I hope we all take with us after this meeting is uh, a, a refreshed sense of the importance of telling the world what we do and why it's so important. Because as a very wise friend of mine who's a geoscientist said, all the major problems in the world have their roots in geoscience. And, and we see this playing out in so many activities that we pursue, but I think we, we go to image, we refresh, we invigorate, we uh, fill our brains with, with more wonderful science and information and connections, and then we can go out and we can conquer the world. <laughs> well, thank you, Gretchen. And Maurice, we'll give you the last word. Image 21, big show. What's the biggest thing for you? You know, it's, it's, it's going to be the biggest uh, geoscience uh, opportunity, market, scientific, and also from a business perspective. I think it's an opportunity for our organizations to communicate clearly with our members and stakeholders about, you know, the vision that, that we have been just talking about is that, you know, we're not there only to, uh, 
to power the world, but we're there also to be able to help saving the world. So I think the message around sustainability and how to help the world and how to be a good citizen and being able to still oil and gas is very important and part of what we're working on. But in the same time, we want to reduce any side effects that comes with it, which we're all very keen on doing. I think the collaboration between the geoscientists in order to come up with solutions there is something that I'm really going to be looking, looking for. So collaboration is a very big part of our strategy moving forward. And I, I you know, one word I would like to, to mention for, for people also attending is to be open-minded. You know, we're all colleagues in geoscience. We all want to be able to, to do the right thing. We are not competitors. Think about SEG and APG as collaborators. We are not competitors. We complement each other for the benefit of our membership. There is no conflict, not even zero conflict that I can see between the organization. I think the demonstration of the image would be, that would be the demonstration. So I'm looking forward to a very big success. And, uh, and then we take it to not only five years, but forever. Thank you, Maurice, very well said. And thank you to all the panelists for joining us today. Image 21, whether you're going to be there in person in Denver or you're going to be joining us online, it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, be sure to mark your calendars for September 26th to October 1st and visit the website imageevent.org. That's imageevent, all one word, dot org for more information. Thanks again to our panelists and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in today and stay tuned to this pace for more SEG facing the future in the months to come.